uh, I had a hobby too. Mine happened to be guns and ballistics. And I studied guns and ballistics as much as I could, and I wrote an article it was about high velocity. So out of all my years of working at Weatherby, the last five have been some of the most exciting. Working with Adam, with him running the company. And to think that I get the opportunity of carrying on my grandfather's legacy 75 years later here in Sheridan, Wyoming, I mean, it really is a dream come true. On Our Mark, the Weatherby Podcast. Episode 10 of the On Our Mark, Weatherby Podcast. We are here in Sheridan, Wyoming. Episode 9 was at the Expo, and uh, we're pleased to have the guys from Stone Glacier here today in our facility. Came all the way from Bozeman, Montana to spend the day with us, and um, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I'm Zach Bouton. Lyle Hebel. Colby Adamic. Oh, and let us know what you guys do. <laughs> I'm the operations manager for Stone Glacier. Hi, I'm the marketing director. I manage content, content marketing. All right. I'm right Kevin on. Wilkerson. And Luke Torkelson with Weatherby. Yeah, we're glad to have you guys here. You guys obviously made the trip down to see us. We're, we're stoked about it. I know, Lyle, you were here for the grand opening. I was. So you kind of yeah. got a sample of that, but we've yep. done quite a few changes since then. Um, and you guys were had quite the show circuit that you guys just completed. Uh, we yeah. got to hang out a few times. Yeah. That's a few good. times. Yeah. Yeah. What shows What shows did you guys do? Uh, we started at... Dallas? Sh- Dallas. Dallas and then Sheep Show. In but wait, Reno. let's let everybody know you drove there. From, we, we did. Yeah, we drive everywhere. <laughs> from Bozeman. We, in addition yeah, to, to building Dallas. backpacks and selling clothing, we tend to uh, take a part-time job as driving truck that time of year. Mm-hmm. We yeah. make so the trip around. So you drove Bozeman to Dallas. Yeah. Dallas to Reno. Dallas to Reno. Reno, yep. Reno back to Bozeman. Yeah, back to back Bozeman. to Reno. Back to Reno, then to Salt Lake. Yeah, and then back home. And then back home. Yeah, yeah. And then here today, solid. Yeah, in the same truck. Always. The, yes. Yeah. A problem here and there, but <laughs> yeah. regardless, it's a good rig though. I have up. a lot of people that run that same that same Ford excursion. Yeah. 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 It's good. She's let us down a few times, but we still love her. So she needs a little TLC from time to time, but that's. You know, put a lot of miles on her, you're going to break her down. Yeah, <laughs> sure, sure. No doubt. It's going to happen. No uh, doubt. Well, you guys got to see a tour today and, and see what the facility is all about. Anything that stuck out to you? Any, anything uh, that you thought was besides cool? Besides the uh, underground shooting range. Okay, <laughs> so that was the number one thing for you, huh? Yeah, I found a new passion in life. Uh, the gentleman down there shooting guns all day. Yeah. Seems <laughs> pretty ideal. Sure, good job. Um, we decided he's probably the best shot in the world. He gets to shoot couple hundred rounds every day a lot so. every day no Magnum, doubt magnum rounds yeah yeah it's not an easy task <laughs> for sure it's not i think i'd have a tempur pillow down there with me just he's built into the shirt he's also like <laughs> one <laughs> of the most chill nice people in our office i wonder it's because yeah. he just has that constant oh, stress dude. relief yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he's in therapy all day <laughs> down all there the sending it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. no as much as it does sound like a fun job it also would be a tough job. It's a lot of For noise. Sure. It's a lot of noise. Yeah. That, just the concussion, concussion yeah. of being in an indoor range all day. That's exactly I right. I think would be tough. No. Probably has to decompress when he gets home. He definitely puts on like the, what do you, what do you go to sleep? Oh, the sleep sounds? Yeah. Sleep yeah. Sleep yeah. Oh, the sleep scan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Introduce these guys. You spend, uh, you know, a couple weeks on the road with each other. You fit, find each other's weird quirks. and <laughs> No doubt. Share rooms. I uh, have a nightly... <laughs> Go to sleep, sleep sound, thunderstorm, rain, <laughs> rains. I don't know. Yeah. Jungle sounds. Yeah. Yeah. Colby can't Old go to mix. sleep without his little Bluetooth speaker <laughs> and his kid music. But really though? <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. Me and my, uh, my wife just started doing it when I'm like, oh man, it would be so nice to listen to rain right now. Hey Alexa, turn on a rainstorm. And it's just been every night since. So now nice. it's like, if I don't have it, I'm like, it's, where's the rain? <laughs> Yeah. In my own thoughts, I'm like, oh, God, rain, <laughs> Alexa. <laughs> Alexa, awesome. make it rain. Yeah. Zach, I know that you also run The Hunting Photographer. Yeah. Which uh, is, tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so last June, myself and then photographer Stephen Drake launched an online hunting photography school. Just It's called The Hunting Photographer. Shout out, Stephen Drake. Shout out. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, yeah, it's been awesome. I think we've ran... 30-ish students through the program so far. Nice. And a lot of them actually um, are doing super well. At Stone Glacier, we actually work with uh, one of the students that went through the first group with us. 
Um, so yeah, it's been cool just to mentor and kind of give some insight to some of the young guys that are trying to get into what, the industry. What do you guys, what do you specialize in? Is it like just intro to photography or do you need no. somebody that's already a photographer and you're like, this is how you do wildlife or hunting? Or? No, it, I mean, it's for anyone. It really focuses more on, if I had to break it down into just one thing, like the business of being a hunting photographer. Mm. Right on. We don't, interactions we, with the marketing people at the companies. And yeah, I mean, we go through the basics, you know, like we start out with like, what's your why? Like, why are you doing this? Is there a good reason you're going to actually take it serious? If you have a, don't have a passion, you're probably not going to make it in this industry. And then just from there, you know, like basic photography basics and like developing an eye because at the end of the day, a photo is just your eye seeing something that you want to capture with a tool. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And then... You know, some of the Lightroom editing stuff I think is pretty key for people. Uh, but we don't we don't teach people what shutter speed and aperture and that stuff means. There's a thousand resources online. So sure. we don't have to, you know, yeah. reinvent the wheel on that stuff. Yeah. And then the biggest chunk of it, which Lyle and I deal with all the time, is just the business of being a hunting photographer. How do you set up yourself as either a sole proprietor or whatever you want to structure your business as? You know, how do you do your taxes? How do you, you know, invoice people? How do you network? How do you make the connections? You know, basically, how do you run an efficient business? Because now being on the other side of it, and Lyle's dealt with it a lot, is like, we want to work with people that know what they're doing. We mm -hmm. don't have to hold their hand the whole yeah. way. And that's mm -hmm. like a big part of it, too. So, sure. yeah. Um, is that person going with Adam to New Zealand? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. James is going down there with Adam. James, shout out to yeah. James. Shout out. Going to see some sweet <laughs> footage from him. Yeah. On the way. James is a great photographer. Yeah. Um, he was just a guy that I think just needed a little, a few insights to kind of get him going in the right direction. And, you know, that's usually just what it is. So, Very cool. yeah, it's been awesome. Yeah. That's actually coming up in like two weeks. Adam's going to New Zealand with him and Ryan Lampers and Brian Call. I'm not giving them a shout out because, well, okay, we'll do it. Shout out. <laughs> so, shout out, shout out to those guys together. We just got a lot of shout outs going on. This <laughs> is how so, it's going to go. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyways, that's cool. Yeah. So you can, they can find your stuff on Instagram. Yeah. The Hunting Photographer. Or The Hunting Photog on Instagram. Oh, But hunting if you just Photog. Google The Hunting Photographer, got a website, you'll find it. Instagram, yeah. the whole shebang. We, so. we got the name. We got the SEO dialed. Right. All right. So if you're so, interested in becoming okay. a photographer in the outdoor industry, yeah. that'd be a great place yeah. to start. If you just want to do it and be in the industry, even if you want to do video or anything, I think it's sure. well worth yeah, the right investment. On. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So well, thanks for all that information. I appreciate the shout out. If I had a shout out button for a guest, I'd hit it. <laughs> shout out. But there you go. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. No, uh, back good. to your original question though. Like I thought the, just seeing the whole operations like how you guys are just bringing more stuff in house and yeah. the dipping and just all the different processes that you sure. have down there is pretty cool to see um, yeah for sure yeah it's very clean like yeah, you think nice. in my mind and you had it built up as like a gun warehouse you're like ah oh, it's gonna be super dirty like the manufacturing side of things and it's it's not it's very clean mm -hmm. and i think our backpack build shop is <laughs> much dirtier than your guys's system down there well it's so. also brand new it is yeah. brand new, so. but <laughs> shout out, shout to, out to our. Oh, we gotta stop with the shout outs. <laughs> you know, we gotta calm shout down the shout outs. It's a lot of shout outs, <laughs> but uh, our our operations team, Keith, they they yeah. spend a lot of time and effort to make sure yeah. it's clean and organized. And yeah. we had a number of things down today, first day of the month, so they're doing maintenance to make sure it yeah. it stays in production times, high output. So yeah. yeah. So obviously you guys came down to see the place, to hang out, but also you guys brought some, you know, some cool apparel. You guys just launched, obviously some yeah. backpacks. Adam's going to New Zealand, going on a brown bear trip. We got a lot of stuff in the works here yeah. and us being just close partners, you guys were able to come down and show us some stuff. So I think kind of explain to us what you guys launched this year. Um, yeah. So this year apparel has been a big focus for us. So we put a lot of attention to our apparel line. Mm -hmm. Um, had a few things in the pack side, but a lot of it was coming out with new colorways and existing apparel lines that people have been asking for and then expanding into, um, we came out with some kind of mid layer slash base layer stuff for the bottoms, our helio bottoms and helio tops. Um, we came out with some rain gear, which is super cool, um, which is called our M5 series. And that's again, tops and bottoms, both colorways. Um, and that's not just it's not just a rain 
layer. You were telling me that it's actually. Yeah, so it's got. I think with everything we do in Stone Glacier, Stone Glacier, we don't want to come out with stuff that's just a Me Too product. So if we're going to come out with stuff, it's going to have something that's different, something that's you know that's going to sell the product. Um, so there's a couple features in those. Um, a just our pro, pro, uh, pro <laughs> I can't say that word. Proprietary. That's the word All I'm right. looking for. That's a good word. Um, textile we're using for our rain stuff. It's it specs out really well. So we encourage people to go and compare it against stuff like you know, the big name out there, everybody knows Gore-Tex um, and stuff like that. And you're going to see some pretty sweet numbers as far as breathability and the water repellency. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely and encourage people quiet. to check I mean, I know it's very yeah. quiet. Yeah. I thought it was cool. It's rugged. Mm -hmm. I was pretty impressed with just the fit and feel of it. Yeah, yeah. it's it's a, that balance because, I mean, people always associate with, with us, our brand Stone Glacier with ultra lightweight hunting. So you want to be careful not to make something that's so lightweight that it's really not of use to you out it's there. Too it, fragile. Right, yeah. and it can't be too stiff so that when you're wearing it, it's, it's not comfortable. So this is a good balance of kind of that <coughs> mid-weight of, of rain gear. Um, but yeah, to Colby's point, I mean, everything we do is, is designed with a purpose. So, you know, all our, our stuff, um, because we are backpack hunters, really first, everything has to interact with the backpack. Typically, that's a heavy backpack, either going in with a lot of gear or coming out with, you know, uh, your gear plus plus an animal that you harvested. So there's some small details, like a longer tail um, that's more comfortable when you're wearing your, your backpack belt tight, things like that. Even mm -hmm. uh, other small details, like all of our arms are longer on our garments so that when you uh, lift up, hi, that was you this time. <laughs> <laughs> the hose is nope. uh, I got burned. Uh, that was me last time we did this, but now yeah. that was your turn. That's the first yeah. time Host that's has happened. the phone yeah. ring. Yeah. <laughs> One of the things that I really liked about uh, when I tried one of the jackets on was I've got relatively long arms, and whether you're yeah. you know holding a gun out or yeah. doing whatever, you usually get that shoulder pull. Mm -hmm. and I didn't notice that at all on on y'all stuff. Felt really yeah, good. yeah. Kurt spent a lot of time in the design room and through that process of uh, addressing things just like that. Like you pick your arms up the glass a lot, and oftentimes your sleeves would pull down. Mm -hmm. You know, he he solved that with different circumferences, longer arms throughout kind of the, the body of the, the arm of the jacket. Mm -hmm. So just a lot of the small details that a guy like Kurt picks up on and then spends a lot of time, different iterations going through and getting that product to be exactly where we want it. Yeah, I really actually, I was right next to you when I did, but when I put the hood up mm -hmm. and I zipped it up. I noticed that the hood came all the way just to under my nose, which I thought was super yeah. interesting kind of eliminates the need for a neck mm -hmm. a neck gaiter yeah yeah whereas yeah. if you were cold enough you threw that thing up and zipped it up man you'd be solid did you notice that i actually didn't zip it yeah. up but now i it's want a pretty to. impressive thing yeah. and it came all the way down you know i like that the zippers did go a pretty yeah. like a long way down so, so when you're really getting hot you yeah it allows you, something, to, you zip it yeah. open yeah, it just allows you to dump heat really fast. Yeah. 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 The zippers on the base layer, the mid layer, and the outer layer all coincide on the legs. So yeah. if yeah. you're like in a period of high exertion, you could yeah. like vent out. It seemed yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah. It's kind of an alternative to if you're sitting glass and forever and you're all bundled up, rather than having to strip everything off, turn up the hill, you can just fully vent and make your move. And then, you know, once you get to where you need to be, zip back up and it's one last step you have to go through. But. Um, if you do need to do that, a lot of that stuff has full full zip systems on too, so it's easy to take on and off. But if you're just looking to avoid the hassle, you can you can do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. If you layer right, usually you don't have to ever change or alter your layers on the bottoms, just because yeah. it zips so wide open and it goes straight to the skin. So you don't have to, yeah you don't have to take your like, pants off to take your bottoms you just, off. You just right. open them. Well, up. you just open them up. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, half the time in November when I was elk hunting, like, I pretty much have those things zipped down, hiking in, just hour and a half, two hour hike. My top's soaked. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My bottoms are great because I had the zipper, you know, like, mm -hmm. wide open, sure. which is awesome. It's a little easier, I think, to, like, move that moisture out of your top than in the bottom, so. And, the, and your bottoms are three-quarter, aren't they? Yeah, we call them boot cut or boot rise. So boot they, cut. yeah, they kind of go right to the top mm -hmm. uh, of your boots so that there's not a lot of bunching and stuff and incorporation with your socks going into your boot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so a little bit, a little bit taller. But yeah, that the layer system just it's just really unique and it's a different way to think about kind of ways to dump and uh, or jump heat yeah. uh, without having to like you, these guys said take all your stuff off, put it back on, and kind of go through that hassle. Just kind of let you get from point A to point B and be comfortable along the yeah. way. Yeah. It's, it's really yeah. cool to see the thoughtfulness in, the, in each yeah. piece, and uh, I'm a big fan of the packs. Yeah. 
at just the intentionality and what's been built into the packs. And I think what makes you guys have one of, if not the best pack on the market is now you can start to see some of those features and clothes is pretty awesome. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you. I think we have a huge advantage in that Kurt. He's just an awesome dude. So like for people listening, so who's much. Kurt? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who's Kurt? Well, yeah. These yeah. guys probably have a better background with Kurt than myself, but yeah. 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 So don't even Kurt know. Roscoe, he's the founder of Stone Glacier and, um, you know, one of the beauties of Stone Glacier, it was it was born out of a passion. Like Kurt is a hardcore hunter, solo sheep hunted in AK for ten plus years, and wow. really that's where the packs kind of found their their way. Is that he, you know, he's just such an intuitive guy. Was he, he had a, this was he a in teacher? His mind. What was his background? Before? Yeah, so he he was up in um, Alaska as a shop teacher. That's right, and. I think just naturally, he's one of those guys that no matter what he does, mm -hmm. he's awesome Dives at it. Right. He perfects it. it. Yeah, yeah. He can't just be okay. If he's going to do it. He's going to be the best at it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Which I think comes through our products in many ways, but everything is, you know, even we'll come back with something and grill him on it and he's got an answer for everything. He's, he's thought about it's hard every to, angle hard you can look at something. Mm -hmm. so. You don't stump him. Yeah. Never. Yeah. yeah virtually never. Yeah. So, yeah, he's just one of those guys, but, um, so he's the he's the founder of Stone Glacier. He is and, and yep. current main designer, lead designer, yep. only okay. designer. Well, we got to do it. Shout out! <laughs> <laughs> Shout out yeah. to Kurt, who's he, also he's, yeah. a big Weatherby fan. He, he is. Throwing that joint out yeah. there because he yeah. is. He bought a backcountry titanium yep. as soon as it came out in six yep. five RPM. So yep. I'm yep. appreciative of that. He got the being, whole package immediately. With him being as technical yeah. as he is and as uh, product minded and like you said, a perfectionist mm -hmm. to, yeah. for him to have called and been like, Hey, I need that gun. I'm like, yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah he <laughs> solely shoots Weatherby, I believe. And he has for a long time. Yeah. So that was kind of a cool connection. To make he even with did you a couple guys. custom guns on his own. Mm -hmm. He's got yeah. a couple that we never even built. So yeah. Yeah. It's pretty cool. I yeah. remember, like, right after we launched the backcountry, Kevin comes in my office and he's like, kind of shaking his head, like, you're not, you're not going to believe this. And I thought something like bad happened. <laughs> and he's like, I just talked to Kurt at Stone Glacier, and that dude, that dude gets it. Like, he's got the whole recipe. Like, he understands why we did the six five RPM with the rebated rim, so we could use the smaller six lug action, mm -hmm. yeah. still have the really light gun but with the magnum performance and yeah. kevin was just like i've never oh, yeah. had it's I'd, like I'd, oh I'd it's amazing i never had anybody just tell me what we what we do yeah, yeah. like you're just like yeah i know this and i know this mm -hmm. and i've got this gun and i've got this gun and this gun does this and i'm like you've got it uh, <laughs> yeah. like you don't need me yeah. and i was like yeah. congrats right yeah. Yeah. Dude, really i've talked with him before and he's like down to the throw of your guys's bolt he's like he got out about you know he's like <laughs> he's got oh, it. just so fluent He's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. He's so yeah. he's dialed. Yeah. 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 He's cool. I awesome got, we guy. got to see him at uh, Sheep Show too, so that was nice. But um, you know, one of the segments we have here, and I'd like to run this, is the Weatherby Top Ten. The Weatherby Top Ten. <laughs> this is a series of questions that we like to ask guests. First mm -hmm. time on the show, Lyle. You, oh, I did some of these ones. You were on this. Mm -hmm. So mm. I'm going to have to leave you out of this one. That's probably fair. <laughs> you already did it. Yeah. You already did it. Unless you want to just join I might in. have new answers. Yeah, it could maybe change. Like, maybe my yeah. top ten has changed a little bit. Yeah. We'll shift. Okay, if you have a shift, okay. you let us know what it All is. Right. Other than that, you two get to answer. Top oh, seat. I like, okay. I like to have both. <laughs> and you guys just answer out as it comes here. Uh, where were you born? Phoenix, Arizona. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, why, why didn't we know that? <laughs> Man. You wouldn't you wouldn't hire wow. me. I'm gonna have to look at you a little differently. Yeah. Uh, That's why I like Mexican food so much. <laughs> uh, I'm, uh, you, I'm from Wenatchee, Washington. Originally. Washington. All right. Yeah. Um how many states have you lived in? Uh two. Three. Three. Two for me. Washington, All right. Montana. All right. Yeah. Three for Zach, two for Colby. How about this is a tough one? Most uncommon item you carry every day. Mm-hmm. So, like, what's an item that you carry that you don't think is normal? Hunting wise, or like day to day? Yeah, I think day to day. I don't know. Everyday okay. carry. Everyday, Everyday carry. Every day. Just keys? You, keep, you don't Keys, you don't phone, anything. chapstick. Yeah. Zach's, okay. a chapstick. Zach's a big chapstick guy. Is chapstick oh, uncommon? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't carry, carry chapstick. In my never pocket. in my life. Okay, well. Then that would be have my you common lied? item. Uh, yeah, I have some chapstick around, <laughs> but I don't know if I carry with me every day. What about you? Oh, once I've got one that Zach's going to laugh at. Oh. Once you get on the chapstick train, though, and you. You don't have it. Your lips are just like a desert. Oh so. yeah. 
Oh, oh Colby yeah. is known Colby for these. Colby has Colby. a sloth pick. Yeah. yeah. I rarely, you can rarely find me without. Aren't those uh, called plac- uh, plackers? Plackers, yeah. yeah. And, now, there's different brands, too. Oh, okay, so okay. don't don't be fooled by, oh, yeah. like, the so knockoff. Not the Kleenex. This is no. a plackers, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's plackers. Plackers, that's. It's got a toothpick. Toothpick, flosser. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just yeah. can't stand to have stuff in my teeth. That so after might be every the best meal. answer I've gotten off yeah. that question. Yeah. Did you that use one good. today after lunch? I've used several. <laughs> <laughs> You're so, like, obscure. I never <laughs> see you using it. Yeah. Sneaky. Yeah. Does it Sneaky. darkness? Uh, <laughs> next question. Favorite state to hunt? Mm. Montana. Yeah, well, that's t- Just because yeah. I hunt there the most. Yeah. All right. you, Jackson I mean, for Montana. For Colby. Montana, yeah, Colorado is slowly becoming a, a passion just for mule deer, just because it's kind of the mecca for, for mule deer hunting. Really? Yeah, I don't know. You went there this past year. Yeah, yeah how'd that go? How'd that go? Yeah, yeah, what unit? Where are you at down there, <laughs> yeah. Colby? We're, we're, we're pretty yeah, good. Nearest landowner names? <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> uh, We did not harvest a buck this year, but we what? did have a cool run-in with a buck that we saw that you last saw last year. year. Yeah, I, I saw that on Instagram. Last year. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah. So why do you? What, what was the discrepancy and difference in results between two years ago and last year? Public private. Uh, yeah, this year we actually saw him on the same hillside, um, but he found the one section of private, and he was a mere couple hundred yards onto it, so we weren't able to get him. But um, it's like they know the line, dude. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah, they ride it too. But he was a cool buck. Yeah, he had. Two big drop tines on them and mm. just a three point, but old. Colby, heavy, big frame. Three Colby point. loves three point. <laughs> I do He's love He's a big three guy. Yeah, just like I love my flossers. Three, <laughs> point, <laughs> three point bucks. <laughs> I do too. I'm a fan of the big That's threes. awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, one second. I'm trying to get The it. next one. Okay, a historical person you could take on a hunt. Anybody in time. Oh, mine's going to be the most. Probably the same. Theodore Roosevelt. Oh, just that's because. one we all the time. I think I, I said that too. Yeah, that's the one I get the most common. I've yeah. gotten a couple good ones. What do you got? Or maybe uh, I'll change. My In the theme too. of presidents, I'd take Donald Trump, honey. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. <laughs> maybe uh, Jim Bridger would be cool. You know, keep the Bozeman vibe mm. sweet. Yeah. Yeah. Just to change up the answer. Yeah, that okay. Would be cool. right, that's good. Um, I we, like that. Got a <laughs> yep. My phone keeps going out. Uh, name a hobby you have outside of the outdoor space. Mm. Help me answer this one for you, Kobe. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't know if we want yeah, to do that. Yeah, just out of curiosity. So, <laughs> Kobe is really into hanging out with his wife and his pug. <laughs> nice. Oh, look, little bear not, teeth. That's not a lie. That is. This is the um, truth. That is oh, you the say bear tooth? Yeah, he's a little dog's name, bear tooth. Great is, dog name. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh huh. He's a good boy. He's you can follow boy. him on Instagram too. At <laughs> <laughs> Colby's pug. Yeah, Col- Colby's pug. What is Colby's it? Colby's beloved pug. Shout out to Beartooth. Shout out. <laughs> what is his handle, though, for real? I think it's Beartooth the pretend. pug. Yeah. Beartooth the pug. Yep. Give him a shout yeah. out. Does he have more oh. followers than you? Oh, I'm sure at this point he's got yeah. it. He's got it. He is a good boy, though. Hey, listen. <laughs> he's a good boy. It, it's, uh, we, have a, we have a pup, too, but it's crazy how many people put their animals on Instagram. Oh, man. Mm-hmm. And how many people follow these animals. Yeah. Like, Who are these people? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to know. No, like, I mean, like, it's <laughs> weird to me. Not, I, oh, yeah, I know yeah. you have an yeah, Instagram yeah. Yeah. You're, looking you're not, at offend, one, you're I mean, not this, offending me. Yeah. This yeah. is my wife. But animal. what's weird is that people follow the animal, and I feel like they, like, they, obviously they know, like, the animal's not making its own posts. Yeah. <laughs> right? right? Like, right. it doesn't have its own Instagram. No, I, I, I like it when they write them like it, like it is doing its own posts, though. Yeah. I think that's, yeah. for me, because yeah. in my mind, I'm like, how's this dog doing this? Yeah, yeah if you're going to follow that page, you need to live in that animal's Almost world. Almost right. like <laughs> selfies, yeah. like, on a chair, and the dog's just, like, hanging out today. Yeah. And you're like, oh, wow, Pugs, yeah. Pugsby's hanging out today. <laughs> years, years ago, I worked with an uh, industrial designer that, was super creative, really good engineer slash industrial designer. And he had his little dog like Gizmo. And that dog was like super famous because his creative type as an industrial designer, he participated in like every possible dog costume contest (laughs) that existed. And he would have the most elaborate, like, I don't know if there's actual cosplay for dogs, but that's what this guy Mm. did. (laughs) And he made more off his dog. Then he did off his job. Oh my god! It was wild. That's I like crazy. It. Pretty wow. wild. I would imagine the companies in that pet space probably go after those accounts pretty hard. 
Oh, I'm sure. I would yeah, bet they, do you, yeah. Does your dog have sponsors? No, this this okay. is not yet. I don't know bear when tooth? the last time Beartooth had <laughs> Man, a post. Man, let's get Beartooth. Come on, Beartooth. <laughs> we, can, we can bring it up. Yeah, you gotta <laughs> get him his own <laughs> phone. In a so while. We can make his own. We gotta get him his own phone so he can make some posts. Yeah, you should. Yeah. Kobe's yeah. pretending like this is hard for him to find right now on his phone. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, be dust. <laughs> this is very dust off of it. Oh, right. <laughs> I haven't looked at this in uh, minutes <laughs> since the last time I was on this page. <laughs> Pretty oh, good. there he is. Oh, yeah. Let's see him. He's a good boy. Followers. He's got 122 followers. He's following. He does have more followers than me. He's following 100. <laughs> he's following 151 people though. That's wild. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he's trying to get that. his followers up. Yeah. Huh? Yeah, yeah. Classic. His last trick. post was in 2018. We're gonna have to change that. <laughs> oh, make a post trick. here. There he is. There's, there's oh wow, that's an amazing. Photo. That's a great is picture. And not a picture you would normally see of a pug. That's nice. Good job. Actually, Beartooth is speaking in first person in that post. Yeah, I believe I believe he would fall into the category of Beartooth uh, is actually a pretty cool pug. Most pugs, not to insult pug owners, but they they're pretty portly <laughs> and just yeah. not not yeah. well yeah. kept. The Beartooth's old, a little he's, he's not lean. exactly a backcountry no, dog lean. typically. Yeah. yeah. Are you guys a dog friendly workplace? I haven't seen any, I haven't seen dogs rolling around. We have one dog in the in the building. Yeah. Gosh, our place. Wrangler is like Adam, and, like, Adam and Brenda's yeah, dog. Yeah. Like, <laughs> why are all these dogs in here? You have a problem? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Yeah. There's a, any day at our office, there's two to six dogs. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah it's a dog do park. That. There's yeah. one dog, and that's the only dog that, that's here. It's Wrangler. It's Adam mm. and Brenda's dog. Mm. It's a good bird dog. Great yeah. dog. Yeah. But he just really just lays around. Yeah. yeah. He doesn't bother anybody. Zach, what's your hobby? Boy. I don't have an obscure or like a hobby outside of like outdoor pursuits, really. Yeah. That's what you do. Yeah. Yeah. So. Fair enough. Just boring like that. Mm. What Photo- about? You know, photography probably was what was yeah, outside of it, but now it's part of it. Yeah, but it was always it was always out because of, of like that. it was skiing before it was yeah. hunting skiing and fishing skiing but that's outdoor. Works. No, no, I, I'm sorry, I should break that question up. Outside I, of I, think I, use, is yeah, I don't golf as much anymore. Although Colby oh, yeah. and Jeff and I were gonna and Lyle. Oh yeah, we almost talked Lyle into a country club membership. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like no two calls away from joining the country club the other day. <laughs> <laughs> they had a pool for the kids, and yeah, Lyle was, was signed up. Yeah, I was trying to figure it out, and then we did the math, and you have to play like 160 rounds to <laughs> for it to, to make pay sense. for it. Yeah, yeah. which plus, we almost justified. Yeah, which yeah, we were again, right we, there. Plus, then you got the minimum food purchase. There's and a food purchase. There's some yeah some stipulations that I wasn't aware of. I feel like. If you're going to be a golfer, like up here isn't the best place to be a golfer. Yeah, no. Like where Arkansas, I, Tennessee. I used to love to golf, Kentucky, but I haven't like played places. since I've been here. You can play the all season. The it's so short. You can play all the time. And it yeah. overlaps with the best possible time here yeah. in Sheridan. Right. I mean, there's right. so yes. many other things to do when we've got the beautiful weather that I don't want to. It's like my motorcycle. I don't feel like I have enough time to ride my motorcycle. Careful. That's yeah. my thing. Yeah. you got to yeah. make the time for the bike. Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. Um, this doesn't have to be a weather bee, but what's your favorite rifle cartridge? Oh, man, that's a tough one for me because I've shot a thirty out six the most in my hunting career and killed tons as, of stuff with as it. As most people probably have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. probably you know, obviously um, the most that in the two seventy. Yeah. Really What do you shoot that? right now? Six five Creedmoor, which is new to me this year. Mm-hmm. Um but so far it's done great. I've killed and deer and an antelope with it and both of them did great yeah knocked it right over <coughs> right on but very cool yeah uh so i'm shooting a 300 short mag which i like but uh yeah i just got a 300 weatherby mag from you guys okay i like that as well i like that i have a little more like long range velocity and energy, energy yeah. with that cal- caliber yeah, and especially sure. like uh just the bc and like wind drift at distance mm-hmm. and stuff Retains weight. Yeah. Bigger bullet. Yep. Yep. Cool. Um, what is your your must as a backcountry item? When you're backpacking, what is the, the must-have item? Uh, okay. And it could be <laughs> Other from a te- than it the little be, flossers? I, yeah, be, that is. Okay, so I've got a goofy one. It could be from a technical one. perspective. Okay, you already have one. Yeah. I have a handheld Yahtzee game that I got when I was a kid that does not leave my pack. No kidding. Did yeah. you just post? Did you just make a post about this? I did. Okay. Okay. Because yeah. for some reason that really rung a bell. Yeah. I thought yeah. I saw this, and then there was somebody that responded to you and said I, the same thing. Dude, turns out there's a there's, there's a like group a cult. of us. There's like a yeah. cult following. Yeah. Yeah. So, so is, is it? Com, I think it's a thing. <laughs> is it? It's battery powered. <laughs> yeah. It or, takes. But it. it I think I've changed the, battery. the batteries in yeah. it once, yeah. and I've had it. I mean, I since I was ten years old. No kidding. So it lasts forever. But yeah, you take it with whether it's 
crappy weather, sitting down or like around a fire, you're stuck it's in a tent, great or idea. whatever it is. It's a little, is it like what color is it? Green? It's like yeah, it's just like this it's yellow like and red. Thing. I don't even know if you can get them anymore. Yeah. I've talked to guys that have looked for them and couldn't find them unless it was business maybe, opportunity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. eBay. Yeah. Oh Yahtzee. Yeah. They're yeah. they're a hot item for sure. Yeah, that actually but. makes me think about my grandmother was a she was, big into Yahtzee. She was huge into Yahtzee. Mm-hmm. She, she passed away years ago, but I remember as a kid coming going to her house super young, and she would sit at the kitchen yeah. table and play that exact. Guarantees yeah. the same little game. Yeah, she would sit there when she hit it. She'd be like Yahtzee. Yeah. you know it was hilarious. It's but funny. I've I've met people time. throughout the years that also have this game, and now you just like stay connected through Instagram. Hmm. And, like whenever you get a high score, you'll I'll get back to service. Like do. Backcountry Yahtzee. Five hundred points. Yeah. That's not a real yeah. URL. Don't go search that. <laughs> or is it? That's just, maybe it is. Go, <laughs> just bought it. Colby just bought it. <laughs> <laughs> Backcountry Yahtzee. No, Lyle's so, over there like. Yeah, I can make this. <laughs> Mark, I don't, this have, anything, right I don't now. have anything off the wall. I'm a huge fan of food though, so I'm yeah. never so what's short your, on snacks. Like, like what? Like what's your What's your, your best backcountry snack? It's actually always ah, eating. It's always just evolving. Like are you are you like a gorp guy a gorp guy or like Good. granola bar like what? Uh, yeah I'll have bars in there I'll have trail mix we'll do like tortilla like peanut butter and honey peanut butter I'm and big, bacon peanut butter and jelly that's my jam. Pita- sandwiches I like, I like, so I'll take old pizza yeah. I'll take like Whoa. whatever old pizza like in a ziploc like yeah you made a pizza before you went hunting. Threw it in a ziploc, <laughs> just <laughs> throw it in your bag. Just randomly, oh, I just got that pizza, pizza in the fridge. You're telling me two slices of nice cold pizza when you get to the <laughs> no. top of the mountain nope. doesn't sound good. No, can't eat brownies. Cold, cold we'll pizza. Take brownies. <laughs> I don't do the cold pizza. I don't. I don't like the smell of pizza after you uh, eat it. Yeah. Dried yeah. fruit, dried mango. Oh sure. Mm. Yeah, dried yeah. mango. That's a good one. Yeah, chocolate. Wow, we've pretty much just gone yeah, through all the food. Anything, so everything you, you can possibly anything bring. You can put in a backpack. Jack will take it. It's that. Okay. What is what is and has happened or what is in the future your dream hunt? Mm. An animal you really want to go after. Uh, Lyle, you answer this when you know, yeah, I can see it in your eyes. <clears throat> yeah, well, I'm, I'm trying to go to Kodiak right now, um, but that's not necessarily my dream hunt, but sure. it's, it's one of them right up there. Yeah. I think sh- taking a sheep is kind of everybody's dream hunt, yeah. um, mm-hmm. but mountain goat is like, for me, just as close. Yeah. So yeah, I'm trying to go back to Kodiak. Identical, same thing. Um, for me right now, I'd really like to go kill a moose. That's where I'm at. Yeah. Yep. I, I don't know. I just have this weird gut feeling that I feel like AK is going to move yeah. towards making that. Harder know. to do. Let's yeah. say that. Mm-hmm. Right. So I'd like to get a moose relatively soon for whatever reason, but. Okay. Uh, for whatever reason, I've just always, it's probably like watching Fred Bear videos back in the day, <laughs> but I think a, uh. Like a Kodiak brown bear with a recurve. Whoa. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Fred Bear. Yeah. Big yeah. shout out. out. <laughs> big shout out. Literally. That would just, for me, that's it. Yep. Yeah. Yep. He shot a giant with that. that I don't know if one. I'll ever, like, have the money to do, do it. Maybe. Sure. But. Yeah. yeah. Be cool. That's what I'd do if I could just pick one. Very cool. You need to double down on those classes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last one. What is your pro tip for a new backcountry hunter should be easy mm. for you guys oh man y'all have mm. so i got so I'm, many, i so can answer tips. this question for him now after yeah. just doing some backpack fitting oh you can't so um. <laughs> <laughs> you need a good backpack eventually yeah, yeah. i need yeah. good boots I, first yeah my pro tip cause... is to just don't skimp on the gear because yeah. you always see guys that mm-hmm. they go with the cheap boots they go with a cheap backpack cheap rifle whatever it is and then have a terrible trip and then can't really figure out why things aren't going so well. Mm-hmm. Having good gear goes a long ways. So mm-hmm. I always tell people just buy it once, buy it for life kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Otherwise, yeah, you're not going to enjoy yourself. Yeah. yeah. I've been trying to adopt that buy once, cry once mentality. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Try to make it not be true. And it's like every time you get let down and you're like, okay, right. I just need to learn from these mistakes and, and do it. But I don't know. On a I'm more serious note, though, I don't know. I don't know if that needs to be our tip. Um, yeah. I mean, I think another pro tip for people that have, are not experienced at hunting is, like, go do it. I think some people want to, like, plan it too much. Just do yeah. it. You know, in, like, yeah. the age of, like, information, they want to, like, have everything dialed, and they don't yeah. ever end up going because it's scary. They don't have all the gear. It's, like, 
you're going to screw up it's and true. not take the right stuff. Yeah. As much research as you put in, like you have to go out and do There's it. There's going to so. be miser- miserable moments no matter what. Yeah. But you got to get through those first ones, figure out what yeah. you need. It's part of what makes yeah. it That's awesome. Good. That's what yeah. makes it awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just got to go. Mm-hmm. Go down. Do Mountain Tough. Shout out. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out. <laughs> Shout out. Shout out to Mountain Tough. Yeah. Um, thanks for yeah, good answers. participating good answers. in the Weatherby Top 10. And yeah. thanks for coming down to see us. Uh, yeah. Obviously, if anybody's interested in your products, we're looking at stoneglacier.com. That's also, great. Instagram, Facebook. Yeah, we're on all the yeah. social media. I was thinking about getting a TikTok account. So. Right. Yeah. 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 So you going to do some dancing on it? Yeah. I can uh, dance. Beartooth might make an appearance. Oh, oh. oh. Beartooth, Beartooth needs a TikTok. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he probably has yeah, one. the horn right now. Yeah. <laughs> really, thank you guys for for coming in and uh, yeah. explaining your line to us. I yeah. I've been a long time outdoor guy, even since before I was hunter. Did a ton of backpacking and just getting the right fit. Mm-hmm. I think for a long time I was kind of prideful, like oh, I got this, and I didn't necessarily have my pack adjusted properly last year. And you can feel it, and just yeah. watching you guys go through the ABCs of how to load your pack, load it with. Uh, hopefully some animal in it yeah. and then use it well i was pretty pumped to get a good lesson from you guys so thanks yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. makes it thanks for showing us around it's oh, for sure awesome yeah. to see i know we've oh. been trying to put it together for a while so it's fun yeah that's great we need come to come see up and see you guys yeah, yeah. for sure soon yeah, that would be fun yeah thanks for coming by and seeing us and this has been episode 10 of on our mark the weatherby podcast